Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Tyler Ruggy, and for today's video, I'm going to be introducing you guys to a few of my new pets that I recently got. The first one being a snake that I got at the Pittsburgh Reptile Expo this past weekend, and the other four of them being tarantulas that I got in Ohio at a reptile expo in Cincinnati. So without further ado, let's meet my new animals. All right guys, so this is my new snake. This is a sunbeam snake, and I don't know if it's a male or a female, but I did decide on a name. I chose the name Opal, and sunbeam snakes get their name because of the iridescent effect on their scales. They're honestly one of the most iridescent snakes I have seen, I think, even more so than the Brazilian rainbow boas. And yeah, these guys are not super common in captivity to keep as pets, and I've always really wanted one, so as soon as I saw this snake, I just had to get it, because uh, I knew I probably would not see them around in Michigan, where I usually am. I'll try to get a closer look at the scales so you can see the iridescent effect better. I don't know how well the camera is going to pick it up. Probably not very well. Is it gonna show up? So yeah, this is Opal, my sunbeam snake. Sunbeam snakes are not for beginners. They're not very common in captivity, and a lot of the times they have parasites when people get them. So you do have to either take them to the vet and get them checked for parasites, or you have to just treat them for parasites, which I'm going to do. I'm going to give her a parasite treatment. A lot of the times they suddenly die in captivity, when people try to keep them and the reason for that is because they a lot of the times have parasites but people don't bother treating them or taking them to the vet to see if they do have them so it is recommended to just as a precaution treat them for parasites just in case so i'm going to be doing that and i believe she's full grown right now i'm just going to call her her even though i don't know what she is i think she's about full grown i don't believe they get much bigger than this I'm basically just keeping her in a tub so that she feels secure and it has a lot of substrate because similar to Kenyan sand boas, they enjoy being completely buried. They burrow into the substrate and they basically stay there and they just come out to eat. But the only thing is that they need very high humidity. Sunbeam snakes need like 90 to 100% humidity at all times so you have to make sure the substrate stays really moist and that the lid on the enclosure you're using holds in humidity well. In the wild, they eat rodents, they eat other snakes, frogs, they eat all kinds of things, but in captivity, if you keep them, you can just feed them the appropriate sized mice. They come from Southeast Asia, and they also aren't super aggressive. If they feel threatened, instead of trying to bite you, they'll actually musk on you. So, of course, any snake can bite you, but it's just known these are a type of snake where they would rather try to run away from you or they'll try to musk. And basically what it means to musk is that is when a snake basically excretes a liquid on you that smells really bad. It's never happened to me, so I don't know what it smells like. Luckily, Opal is a very nice snake and has never done that to me yet. So hopefully it stays that way. These snakes also are not venomous. They kill their prey by constricting them, although there were plenty of venomous snakes at this Pittsburgh Expo, and I was tempted to get one, but I knew it wasn't a good idea because I really don't feel confident enough to keep a venomous snake yet because I really probably don't have quite as much experience as I should. Um, I have only been keeping snakes for a few years now, and I don't think I'm quite ready to keep a cobra or a viper, but maybe I will in the future. And I'm gonna put her away now so she doesn't get too stressed out, so everyone say goodbye to Opal. The reason why I called her Opal, by the way, I don't know if I explained this, was because if you look at the scales, there is an iridescent effect. And she is a gray color, but some sunbeams are more of black color, but this one was more of a grayish blue, and I thought it was really pretty, and it, it looks like Opal in certain lighting. So I thought I would name her Opal. So say goodbye to Opal, our new snake friend.
So next we have my tarantulas. So if you don't like tarantulas, you can skip this part. But basically, I got four tarantulas. Three of them are slings, which I have right here. They're in these tiny containers because they're very small. A couple of them are starting to reach a size where I'm going to get them a larger container. But basically for slings, this size container is good. So these tarantulas are arboreal, which you can tell because these are vertical containers. They like to climb upwards. This one is an Amazon Sapphire Pink Toe. He's up at the very top, right underneath the lid. I don't know if you can see it, but he's really small and he's in his web. Next one you can see very easily. This is a Goody Sapphire. He's a little bit bigger, so pretty soon I'm going to put him in a bigger container. And the third sling I got is a Venezuelan sun tiger, which is in the bottom of this container. I don't know how well you can see him. He's right there in the bottom, right here. And then we're gonna move on to the next tarantula who's pretty big, so if you get freaked out easily, just a warning, this next one's gonna be Pretty much a full-grown tarantula. It's a Arizona blonde tarantula. Okay, so this is my Arizona blonde tarantula. I named it Sedona. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl again, but I decided to name it Sedona. And I'm not directly handling her right now because she was a bit moody. She was lifting up her legs and flicking her hairs. For those of you guys who don't know much about tarantulas, if they feel threatened and they're going to bite you, then they lift up their two front legs and it just shows that you want to leave them alone, basically. Otherwise, they might try to bite you. Maybe she'll let me hold her. Let me see. I'll see if she just willingly goes onto my hand. So she's right here on my hands, as you can see. She's very active. Basically, if they feel threatened, they lift up their front legs, or they can kick the back hairs that are on their butt. I don't know the like proper terms for the parts of the tarantula, but they basically have hairs on their butt that they kick out at you, and they stick into your skin, and they itch really badly. People say it feels like fiberglass going into your hands. So it's quite unpleasant, but this particular tarantula, if it did choose to bite me, it wouldn't be super venomous that would actually do anything. If anything, it would just be very uncomfortable. So yeah, I'm not super afraid of this tarantula, but I'd rather avoid getting bitten if possible or avoid getting hairs flicked at me. So I'm going to put her away now just because I think she's a bit stressed out. So say goodbye to Sedona, the cute little Arizona blonde tarantula. She's really sweet, but I'm just very cautious that I don't stress her out too much. I also don't have a whole lot of experience with actually holding tarantulas, so I'm still a bit nervous to hold a tarantula for an extended period of time. I'm still kind of getting used to it and everything, so bear with me. But I love tarantulas, and I think that really more friendly species shouldn't be feared by people. In general, tarantulas are just, people find them very scary and spooky, and I don't know why. I mean, I understand, kind of, but they are really fun and interesting creatures, and they're really pretty. So I want to do more videos with my tarantulas to try and get the stigma away so that people can learn to appreciate them more because they are really pretty and cool creatures to own. And as you can tell, because I've gotten seven of them in the past like couple months, like obsessed with them right now. So yeah. But yeah, those are my four new tarantulas. So I hope you guys love them as much as I do. I do want to throw in there that some of the tarantulas that I got are not for beginners. My sunbeam snake is not for beginners. So, as with any animal, make sure you do extended research before purchasing them. I know I seem crazy making these videos, always talking about how I got more animals, but I always do research before I actually go out and get anything, and I do have everything set up beforehand. So my sunbeam snake, I've been looking for a sunbeam snake for a while. I've been researching them for months, so it wasn't something that I just totally bought an impulse. 
I just saw it at this expo and I knew that I have been wanting one and I wasn't sure when I would see one again so I took the opportunity to purchase one so I just wanted to throw in that disclaimer if you guys like this video make sure to give it a big thumbs up subscribe to my channel because I post videos every week check out my social media the links to those will be in the description below and I'll see you guys in my next video